Yehova Malak, Olam Olamat. Yehova Malak, Yami, Rakis. Yehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Yehova Erdanai, Yehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Elda et Yehova, El Emuna Yehova. I Basilion Kurios, Otios, O Pantacreta. Basilios Basilion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova Dabar Halal, Elohim Dabar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion Pantacreta. Kurion Numa Hagion, Gadol Gadol Gebura. Derek Emuna Bakar, Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Understanding the very purpose of our life in this church age. So that every believer could wake up and understand the true calling, the grace and this great burden of labor, which is very easy and light in the sight of God, to be carried in the presence of God, as he said in Matthew chapter 11, saying, Come unto me, all you that labor. The people who go for labor over here is ko pio. That means, who grow weary, get exhausted. And these are the people who do labor, toil. And in Lord of a God, we are called to come unto Him. All that labor, all that have heavy laden called to be burden, so that Rather than having spiritual anxiety or unwarranted precepts, God the Father said, He shall give us His rest. And the rest is anapauo, which meant to say to give us complete recovery from the labor and to collect back your strength. And then he said, take my yoke, which is called to be zugas, the burden or bondage or slavery, and learn the word mantano to become a disciple. For I am meek, called to be gentle, humble, and lowly, meant to say, not rising far from the ground, but all the time he has been kept in the circumstances which could make you to be 
absolutely in a low order to humble. And then, in heart, and you shall find the rest. Again, the word anapuasis meant to say, your cessation of any motion or to have to recover your collection of your strength back. And then he says, you get that to your souls, the breath of lives. Again, he says, for my yoke is easy. The first time, it is easy meant to say, it is virtuous, crustotes, which is pleasant. It is not burdensome. In any way you take it is better, it is gracious, it is kind. It is in the sense that you furnish. So he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden, again he says, called to be the portion what he laid down upon us, wherewith it has been laid down upon his followers as Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. He says, my burden is very light. The word light is called to be quick, a guy, light in weight. And this goes to the base called to be to driving you in the sense of making you to be in the excellency of your rank or your great age, which meant to say, looking upon the time, you should be the communicators of Bible doctrine in that sense. So when he says the word light, it is called to be in the rank prescribed to you, you can carry this burden, which is very, very, very easy to drive. Because the process, what you do is purely the work of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. There could be no other option. Therefore, in Colossians 1, 29, he says, Not we that work, but Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which worketh in us mightily. So our Lord our God said long back in Matthew 11, claiming to them to understand the authority given by God the Father. And he says to us, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man has the epinosis knowledge about the Son except the Father. Neither anyone has the epinosis knowledge or any man has epinosis knowledge about the Father except the Son. And he, that is what the Son, to whomsoever the Son will reveal him, they will have this epinosis knowledge. And then he says in 28, Why do you want to spend your time in the labor which is not profitable? Come to my yoke. Come to my burden, because my yoke upon you is easy. My burden upon you is in the excellency of the rank which I drive. And you learn, become disciples for it. And you learn from me how I was gentle and how I was humble. In everything he obeyed, he writes in Philippians 2, 5 and following. He obeyed till to the death on the cross. So he says, I am gentle and I am humble in heart, so shall you shall find rest unto your souls. You know, the anxiety what you have, the worry what you have, the fear what you have, the sin what you have. All these things are nothing but for you a sin. You don't have rest in your souls. When you have rest in your souls, you will come to carry the yoke of the Lord God, which is easy. And the word easy, it meant to say crustotis, which is virtuous. And the word also has to be translated as pleasant. It is not harsh. Do you think carrying your cross every day following my Christ is a harsh thing? It's easy. It's a pleasant. Those who love the Lord God, they enjoy to do it. As you have any other things on this earth to have a pleasant in doing it. Therefore, whenever... You find a work which has been given for you. If you have a great joy in that, or if you have a great desire to do that, you will have pleasant in that. You will really enjoy that work. And when you don't enjoy your work, you feel it burdensome. But Lord God says, the work what you shall do, it will be not only pleasant, but virtuous. It will be benevolent, it will be easy, it will be gracious, it will be for you all the time to be in the standards to receive. And God the Father would make it up to give you to handle, to furnish, and give its proper finishing line. So he says, he lends the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit, that which is necessary for you every breath you take. 
and through that he says you will achieve that which is designed by God which you have received as a loan from God as Pro Psalms 22 verses 25 and following teaches that the church would pay the vast vows that's what God the Father prays for us on behalf of God the Son prays on behalf of us saying that through the church O Lord I will pay the vast vows we expounded that long back in Psalms 22 so the great number of woes which have been pending, what we have been taken as a loan now, what we have to be paying back, what we have been borrowed, and what we have been taken up, we have taken up the standards called to be the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have taken up the completed canon of scripture. We have taken up those things. If you would really understand the importance of this, you would really be shocked. You have really taken up and you are not paying back anything to the Lord, not even the interest. Not even you are coming close to think what is that interest to the Lord. So, the things what he says over here, Christotes, that which is easy, it is not the right translation. It has to be for you pleasant. It has to be for the standards wherewith he calls to realize that it is virtuous and it is pleasant, virtuous, and above all, it has been lended for you. You have borrowed and he has given you to fulfill it and you have to pay it back completely with a great pleasure to God the Father by making use of that thing, by employing yourselves to entreat and to learn and furthermore, he also goes to teach because of this crustotes that has been lended as a loan unto us. As per the necessary and as we need, he's going to supply. As we read that in Philippians 4. In nothing be anxious, but in everything give thanks to God the Father. He shall supply all your needs. We have Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have the completed can of scripture. We have enough of the grace given to us. Then what else we need except we join as disciples and grow up as grammatias and fulfill the loan. You borrow money from a bank. You need to pay back. You would look for proper employment. And you plan your financial status. According to that, for EMI, what you need to give. You work and every month you go ahead except some disasters like this COVID pandemic sickness or catastrophical changes in the climatic conditions which could cause your business to cease or this or that. Unavoidable things. Apart from that, there is no way you cannot pay back your EMIs because you have a good job. You have been free from everything so you can pay it back. The same thing with us as well to pay back the glory of God the Father wherewith we need to give him that honor. So what all we do? He goes on to write, first you have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. You have the completed can of scripture. You have breath in your nostrils to breathe. You have enough of grace so that you not worry about anything. But if ever you live, you go to pay back the loan what you have taken from the Lord, the word what God the Son gave to God the Father in Psalms 22, saying that through this church I will pay the vast vows. Just go and pay back your loans. Therefore, he says, my yoke is easy. You are really not able to understand the depth because you have failed to look that in the original languages of the scriptures. Therefore, the great burden for the pastor teachers under the ministry of Cairo being anointed by Lord God the Holy Ghost. At the moment of salvation, given this bona fide gift, and as we graduate in the word of God to come up, you would never open up your mouth to teach nothing but the truth. And Jeremiah 3.15 teaches to us much of the information followed by Ezekiel 1.7, how upright we need to walk like a calf which has a straight foot. And how we have to be before the Lord God, under the authority of man, to the right side having the power of a lion to roar, to the left side having 
the standards of what the word of Lord God calls in the power and the vigor of a bull and then the ox and then the eagle the bull to the left and then the eagle the four things you need to really look the power and the vigor of a lion the strength of a bull the future vision like eagle having all these three synchronized to become to represent Lord God in the form of a man you are really not able to understand you are not just a man in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, those things which are associated with Him, and we look even in the book of Revelation, which has the 24 elders falling down before Him, and this seraphims which have been surrounded over there, we are really not able to realize this angelic host. People may love to think upon angels in the form of demons, because they picturize them in that way. But you have been surrounded by the entire angelic host, as when Elisha says to God the Father to open up the eyes in Second Kings 6, 16 and 17 of his servant with him so that he could look, they that are with them are more than they that are visible over there. And all the time we have been associated with the angelic conflict, all the time we have been given this four beasts power for us to understand our life. All the time, the indwelling, entering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling, leading, guiding us. What a great source we have of energy. And in order to pay back the loan, what it has been taken, it requires a clear conscience. It requires to carry your cross every day, follow my Christ. It requires to pay back as a true pastor teacher, the burden of you in making disciples who join as disciples and in return grow up as grammatias before the Lord. And the believers who should come with a true heart, a heart which is repented, a heart which is absolute glory of God the Father, you should come back with such process. A true heart. The pastor teacher doesn't come with a true heart. The congregation doesn't come with a true heart. And yet, though the word of God says, take my yoke which is easy and learn from it by becoming disciples, you are not having that gentleness and humbleness of Lord God. Neither you are finding rest in your souls. Always troubled souls you are like a troubled sea who goes on to tempt us with the, sea, with the waves of the sea. Though he said his zugas is very easy, the burden bondage slavery, that is, being provided by God the Father in carrying this burden. And though he said the word, the portion, burden is nothing but for us in the Greek portion. That is, the things which the Christian or the, of the obligations of Christ, which lays upon his followers. What are the obligations? So that the faults of the conscious which oppress the soul should be cleared. So the portion, the burden, is nothing but grow up as grammatias, go and make disciples. If you love him, keep his commandments. And he says, my burden is very, very quick, and it is light in weight. In the rank of authority given to you, you can easily execute it. So what is this we shall learn after this prayer? Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the grace to teach according to the rank which you have given to us, which is not a burden, O Lord, for us, but rather so easy to understand all burden, everything according to the help that has been needed unto us, you supply according to the riches of your grace, which is in the indwelling, controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The only thing what we need to be is sanctified and kept apart for the work all the time getting every thought into captivity for Christ, every breath we breathe in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the things that we walk, worshipping you in spirit and in biblical truth. We have to be always the workers in the standards of Alathenias, what you demanded in John 4.23. And as long as we walk in this process, O oh Lord, what a great life we enjoy in the powerful mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, day by day. 
and what a great work we have on this earth to enjoy it because everything is done by you as you said it is virtuous mild pleasant for the word easy and you lend us according to the things that have been needed unto us why and for what we worry about the zugas by becoming slaves unto you o lord why we worry the details of life because when you are there with us who could be against us when you are with us it's enough giving to us this many great things the completed can of scripture the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and the grace a sound health which we learn and acquire day by day through the word of god except to pay back the portion of your sorrow the things that are due to be for you as a loan in honor as tino the word goes in hebrews 2 help us o lord to walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and pay it back completely not even to let go the hoof as we read in exodus 10 when moses said to pharaoh that he shall not let go even the hoof of that small calf but he wants the entire animals to be sacrificed unto thee so be o lord our lives the things given and by the grace of you to us help us to pay back completely all that you desire so that at least by this generation what we are on this earth you could fulfill the desires of your heart and we could doubly pay it back unto thee do this extent father as we study the things which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date as you gave them the manna every day the freshness of the oil which was like the taste they used to taste in its vigor as you said in the power of lord god the holy spirit o lord in the vigor of your word refresh us by your spiritual manna which are prepared and kept for us on today's date wherewith men are perishing without laboring for the food which perisheth not but at the lord we come daily to labor for the food which perisheth not help us to also look for the glory which perisheth not may lord god the holy spirit o lord enlighten and challenge us by the message of today's date as we pray in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ christ name we ask sovereign lord amen so looking upon the things what we have for us in jeremia 3 he says for us as heart of the lord he shall send his shepherds in jeremiah 23 4 he said i will set up the hebrew word called over here is comb that means he is going to arise he is going to make them stabilized he is going to maintain and confirm them and he is going to persist and ratify and he is going to bind them for the things to be in the great strength of the lord god shepherds over the work of feeding the word of god the word shepherds is ra'a which is nothing but to graze and to feed that's why the great word for pastor teacher poimone didaskalas it is not foolishly called reverence or doctorates or any other things but except poimone didaskalas rightly dividing the word of truth in ephesians 4 which is called for us they have to be teaching shepherds so what is the right work of shepherds when he uses the word shepherds over there he says over them which shall feed them again the word over here is the same hebrew word called as raha r a a h again it meant to say he feeds you the word of god so that in return you could go and feed others the right mind of christ he doesn't have any other work the shepherd's work is to make you to grow up as grammatias so that in return the grammatias were grown up in the great commission given for us in the church age of matthew 28 18 through 20 he should go and make disciples of all the nations that's very simple that's the only logic what we have for us in the word of god shepherds come to train the congregation train them up in season and out of season because we do not know when is the time you have to be preparing them that's what we use the word second timothy 3 
In 16 and 17, all scriptures being divinely inspired by God, Theonastas, for the purpose of reproof, correction, instruction, and training. That's the word, training. And the church is a classroom where you have to be trained. And our Lord of God said, if these men are like Christ, that's enough. Because the slaves, when they become like Christ, it's enough, said the Lord. But for us over here in the completed kind of scripture, since we have this enlightenment of this New Testament in Ephesians 4, particularly the mystery epistles, he goes to teach they should have the thinking like Christ. Coming to Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 32, he goes to further employ to understand Every believer has been predestined. You are predestined. You believe it or not, dear brethren. You are predestined not to conform to the world. You are predestined. And the word what he writes over there is very simple. To the image of his dear beloved son. That is, you have to be like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in your thinking. You should have a heart of understanding the plan of God like Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you should be as little Christ. That's why you're called to be as a Christian. And if you would find the word Christian in the New Testament three times, the word disciples have been called 269 times. So you need to understand, if you are not as a disciple, shepherd cannot train you. Shepherd cannot train you so that you could become the right designation called to be the ambassadors of the word of God. And as long as you fail to become the ambassadors or reconciliation ministry, the purpose of your life is not worth. Today, if you don't collect your spiritual manna, as every day they were asked to collect as much as they can, not more nor less, but when they weighed under the womer, everyone had equal. Even today as well, you have been given much time to understand the word of God. If you don't collect your spiritual manna and if you think I will collect weekly months in the church, the remaining six days, you cannot survive on that one base of the food or what you take one solid hour of teaching in the pulpits if there is solid hour of teaching. You cannot survive. You think, I will just live like a ritual nominal Christian. All the people go to the church, even I will also go to the church. But no, you are called to become a shepherd. You are called in return to grow up as grammatias, joining as disciples. And you are called to go and make disciples of all the nations. You cannot have disciples if you are not a teacher. Grammatiers joining as disciples and growing up, those grammatiers are they who would teach, who would have the knowledge that which could meet the master's mind. And this knowledge, God the Father says to his Son, except the Son knows not the Father, so the Father alone knows the Son, and he has given authority to the Son to reveal to them to whom he findeth fit. And how, for example, you may think, you know, much of the pain, depression, or troubles that you pass through on this earth is purely because of the way that you made Lord God the Holy Spirit to be grieved, squelched, waxed, neglected. And as we read that in 1 Samuel 10, 19, as they rejected, what did they did? They disappeared, the word of God. They forgot the works of Christ and they went along to worship Baal. And then afterwards he chose a man, calling all the tribes in that he lacked the tribe of Benjamin to be the first king, Saul. In the New Testament, the man who did much work for these Gentiles in the word of God, in giving them right doctrine, Again, from the same tribe of Benjamin, but the one who has now been called to be from Saul to Paul. 
So he taught them the time of the Israelites, saying they rejected the Lord. Ending the ministry in the same Benjamite tribe, through Paul, he says, if anyone would follow, let him follow like Paul. Because he said, I imitate Christ, so imitate me. And later on he comes, as dear beloved children who have to be technon children, called to be the disciples of the word of God, imitate God the Father. So as the first tribe king rebelled and rejected and went along to the standards of going to worship, again necromancy standards, we find ending up of the New Testament to be paid back like Paul, the man who was also of the same tribe and who was also had the same name called, called to be Saul. So you learn a lesson, the Old Testament Jews, like the first king Saul, they are presented and they failed. But now when we come over here, no Jews, no Greek, all are one in the Lord. The same standards what Paul kept, so we need to walk. We need to learn. We need to be edified. So in those standards he writes for us, you should be like the thinking of Christ. Second Corinthians 5, he says this ministry of reconciliation is given for us. Again in Romans 8 he writes, You have to be looking your predestination, which is nothing but to conform to the image of the dear beloved Son, that is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And much of the doctrine what he communicates for us. The man who had the experience to go to the third heaven, though he did not reveal to tell the things of the Rimata declaration of doctrine. Because he says over there, those things haven't given for me to Rima, for me to declare. Even every believer, given now the completed account of scripture, can have the experience of this great doctrinal life. He is not excused if he doesn't have this experience. So he says, I have given the shepherds who shall feed you. In Jeremiah 23.4, in comparison with Jeremiah 3.15, we read that verse. I have given shepherds so that now every believer should open up his lips to talk the glory of God. You are called to be the ambassador of Christ. If you have been bestowed with the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, if you have been bestowed with the work of evangelism, the very words of you, as he writes in Psalms 119, you know, these words are very, very important, as many people don't really understand the depth of this. He said in verse number 31, which is very important for us, <laughs> Have your Bible, open it up, we shall read it and we shall correct it in the standards of Hebrew. He said in verse number 29, saying, Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. In 30 he says, I have chosen the way of the truth. Thy judgments, which is nothing but mishfat, the things what he decides, he says, I have laid it before me, or constantly I go on to agree with that. In verse 31, I have stuck unto thy testimonies. The word stuck is not the exact translation which has to be the buck. And this stuck to explain for you, when you get yourself with your own wife, legally wedded wife, which has to be more specific. When you have intercourse with her, the way you glue, the way you stuck up, that's called to be stuck up. Because that would clearly explain you, the word dabak. And why and how the Hebrew writes this word for us? Because he says, I have stuck unto thy testimonies. What are the testimonies you find in the Bible? If there were great men like in the past who did the work of God in the Spirit of God, like Moses who said, I am 120 years old, yet his eyesight was not dimmed. Could you stuck up to the testimony of the Lord? Caleb, 85 years old, yet he has in him the vigor of 40. Could you stuck up to the testimony of the Lord? 
You simply think, if you are 70 or 80 years, the passage what we read in Psalms 90, which we corrected. That's for the passage, those who grieve and squelch and wax and lie and die sin unto death in spite of giving them gracious knowledge to recover, to rebound and get back to the work of the Lord. Yet they go to be the repeated witnesses of grieving Lord God, the Holy Spirit, rather than becoming the repeated witnesses of the mind of Christ. So have you ever stuck up to the truth? So he says, I have stuck up to thy testimony, which is a repeated witnesses for me. O oh Lord, put me not to shame. The reason why we read this. Today, much of the people take the words of a doctor who is a physician or any specialist in the realm of the life very seriously. They take it granted, rather than believing the testimonies of the word of God and calling you all to become the shepherds, looking upon the time by giving number one priority for the word. That work we don't do. We don't gather our spiritual manna every day. But when the time comes when you're sick, you would ask God the Father, deliver me once, so that I will once again stuck unto the testimonies. But what happens? God the Father in His grace, like the people of Ninevites, is going to release you as He sent Jonah, though Jonah was reluctant to go. After you recover from your sin, what do you do? When God the Father has given you grace, when you use rebound, do you think the things which are pending to the Lord God, would you continue to become a disciple or join as a disciple and grow up as a grammar? Yes, no, you don't. While you are in the bed, you love to spend time with the Bible. But when you are out of the bed, being cleansed by the Lord from your sinness, you follow the same old, that's why it is called as old sin nature, the same old paths of your sin nature. You don't come back to correct your life. You don't stay for the right word of God. You don't have that zeal. You don't have that vigor and valor to come back and say the word that you gave. You have to be faithful enough in fulfilling it. That's why once again he spanks you and you'll die at the age of 70 or 80. That's what he says. These are the sinners. This is the way they grieve, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. But they that really obey the mind of Christ, they that are intended to work for the glory of God above anything else, as Epiphanes was Epipodiphus was for Paul in Philippians when he writes, Though he was nigh unto death, he did not consider his life, but he went along to do a faithful service to the Lord. And the same thing he writes about our keepers in Colossians 4.17. Be diligent enough to take care of the ministry wherewith Lord God hath given you this ministry. But much of the Christendom believers today who do not know the pastors they have come, whether they have come for their belly, or whether they have come for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, whether they have come in the form of gravenous wolves, but not knowing, the congregation doesn't know these are gravenous wolves, and what for they have come they do not know, and yet they entertain them in the pulpits. But at the end, the ministry is not been given by the Lord. If Lord God giveth the ministry, he also gives the ability. He gives the ability in testing you, in examining you first, whether are you really worthy enough to carry the cross in the work of the Lord. Would you prove your fidelity first? Would you prove that you are really worthy in the sight of Lord God carrying his burden every day? He wants consistency. He wanted every day to carry the spiritual, the physical manna given for them, but they rebelled in Numbers 11. We remember the fish, we remember the cucumbers, you know. That's what the flesh is all about. The garlic, the onions, the grass. That's actually the grass, not leeks, the grass. And we remember. But who is thinking to eat this manna which can give you the freshness of oil, the vigor in serving the Lord. This freshness of oil is very important because the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone can give us that vigor. 
And how do you get that freshness of oil until unless you take in and pound in and make those cakes of that manna given to you? Manna is nothing but the word of God. And when you take that, that produces in you the freshness of oil. That's the vigor. And if you don't have the word of Lord God, then you cannot understand this vigor. Which, be, which is the only driving force for our life on this earth. What is the freshness of oil in you? What is that vigor? Your only vigor is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the word of God. First, you have to pound in the word of God, given to you every day by the Lord's mind, in his grace. After taking in the word of God, you should have that vigor, because Lord God, the Holy Spirit, produces in you that vigor. That vigor not to be the same. When the Spirit of the Lord God came upon Saul, we are reading that in First Samuel chapter 9 and 10, particularly in chapter 10, verses 6 and verse 9. He had an another heart. He became an another person. And then we read that word. Akereth ish. After the manner of the new man, immediately he became. Hapak Akereth ish. That's what the Spirit of Lord God would do. That's what the freshness of the oil would do. It doesn't want you to end up your life in the same all sin nature activities, constantly grieving and squelching and waxing. You know, that's why if you have your enemy, for example, if he has done something wrong, though the Bible says, forgive vengeance is mine, I will pay back. But yet there will be some people, though they may not be really taking vengeance, but in their thoughts and in their inner activities of life that curse or to blame, they do several times because they want to pay him back. And how much they want to pay him back? The greater damage what he did. If he has made him, made him, made his ego to be hurt and made him to be having to say the things which are insulted to him or the things which do not say a satisfaction for his soul, then he develops upon him the revenge grudges. Till when do you think he's going to keep quiet? Till he could pay back. And for one, he wants to pay back five times or four times more as we follow the principle between Nathan training up David. And David says, I will pay fourfold. The same thing what Zacharias did, looking upon Christ coming back and saying, and when he got that salvation to his home, even he is also the son of Abraham. And he came up with that righteous activities to say, with injustice what I have taken, I will pay back four times. So even we want him to be paid back four times. Till that time, do you think we will keep quiet? As one of the author in his poem, he writes, who didn't have eyes, he is a great poet. Maybe he is some Milton or John Milton, something like that. I forgot his name. He says, if you have hatred towards your friend, it is a sonnet poem. And gradually you pour water into it and that plant will come up. It will give the fruit. And when you eat that fruit, you consume it and you die. Till the time he has that revenge to be taken. So he says, don't take such revenge. So we men have always revenge tactics, hatred, vindictiveness, maligning, gossiping, judging, you know. Because that opposite person has done us so much of damage, so I need to take that revenge. We are talking about the Christian lines. If there are unbelievers who do not have the fear of God, they also still go to murder them. We have seen that, taking revenges. If you want a list on that, go back and watch Indian movies. You will find in other languages the way how a villain goes to destroy the hero's family and now hero comes and destroys the villain family. That's what the revenge is. They don't wait. For one, they will pay more than, more than four or five times. So the thing, I'm not trying to kid you, but rather I'm telling to tell you, that 
much of the time you grieve Lord God the Holy Ghost. Much of the time you squelch Lord God the Holy Ghost. Much of the time you sin against Lord God the Holy Ghost. Do you not think he will also develop upon you the same revenge tactics? That's why we have a word for us to learn over here. It says in Amos, the reason why he is not happy with you. He says in chapter 5, in verse beginning with standard call to be, verse 20, Shall not the day of the darkness of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? He says, I hate, I despise your feasts. I will not smell in your Solomon assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take you away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy voils. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as mighty stream. And then he says, Have you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years? O house of Israel, but you have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Kiun. The word meant to say royalty. The word Kiun meant to say an image, royalty of your image. And the star of your God which you made to yourselves. Therefore I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, said the Lord, whose name is the Lord of God of hosts. It's the same thing we read again over here for us. In the book of Lamentations, not Lamentations, it has to be in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64. These words are very important for us, dear brother. In verse 9, they claim, saying that, Be not worth very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people, because the revenge, what a man has to pay to another, he will be always planning. The same thing over here as well. These people, they are always planning. So they pray to God, the Father, saying, Lord, do not remember our things of revenge every time, but rather forgive us and forget us, so that you could be reconciling back and we could be the people for the work of your hands. But what is happening today, much of the people don't understand, because he said for us, in the standards, in Zephaniah chapter 1, it shall come to pass in verse 8, in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. The word strange apparel is nothing but not having the clothes of this new man, Ephesians 4.24. The word strange is nothing but Nokia, meant to say foreigner or alien. And the word apparel is called to be malbush, meant to say, meant in, uh, which meant to say clothing or apparel, which is not correct. Then he says, And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, that there shall be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and the howling for the second and the great crashing for the hills. How you inhabitants of Makfish, for all the merchant people are cut down, all they that bear silver are cut off. It shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees. The word lees is nothing but which is called to be as the dregs. And the word dregs is nothing but they have ended up with wine rather than the real fear of the Lord. They say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore their goods shall become a booty and their houses a dissolution. They shall also build houses, but not inhabited them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry, and cry there bitterly, because the day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of wasteness, and dissolution, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Though people may go on to look upon the historical interpretation in the historical background and the time of the prophecy that to be fulfilled, but we take that to analogy to the present spiritual life for us. If you are suffering 
without having peace of mind, without having rest unto your souls, that is meant to say you haven't carried the yoke and the burden of the Lord. It will be like the day of the wrath of the Lord God upon you. It will be the day of trouble, the day of distrust, the day of wasteness, the day of dissolution, the day of darkness, the day of gloominess, the day of clouds, the day of thick darkness. In the present Christendom, much of the pastor teachers or the reverends, they have come up to you, they have come up to talk all about prosperity gospel, thinking that if you would sow to them their ministry, you would get such and such great rewards. But the Bible says, no. When a man loves to plan to murder other man or to take revenge upon him, then how much more Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would have that revenge upon you. Therefore, he writes for us in the same Isaiah chapter 64, in verse number standards of this verse number 8 saying that but now O God thou art our father we are the clay and your potter we are the work of thy hand and yet we go to wax Lord God the Holy Spirit in the previous chapter of Isaiah 63 in verse 8 he turned against you and he became rebellion and he consumed you for you so dear brethren the things what we learn over here, saying to the point, I have chosen the way of truth. I have stuck unto the testimonies. When you have recovered, when you have come back, be thankful to the Lord because you have been escaped from the wrath of God which has to come upon you. So he says in 119 verse 31 and 32, I will run the way of thy commandments. The word run is nothing but roots. That is, I will drive in your way. The word way is called to be direct, which is nothing but the course of life. And have in thy mitzah the court of wisdom. That's what after recovery every believer has to do. After rebound that they have to run. They have to run now the course of life to be the commandments of the word of God as number one priority. And what does he do? When you shall enlarge. The word enlarge is rakab, which meant to say to grow wide and to broaden up. You know, the first thing, the thinking of your heart, that's called to be the lab, the inner man, the understanding, that has to be increased. How the thinking could increase if you don't circulate doctrine in it? Do you think by thinking cosmos or the thinking of this world could circulate you? No. Only by the sound exegetical word you can increase your thinking. And that what you have increased will enlarge your heart. Till you could enlarge your heart you will not have enough faith. You will not have the faith to know the powerful deeds of the Lord, to believe them. You will not have the faith to understand the great and unique pale wonders of Bible doctrine. Because you haven't run in the way of the code of wisdom of Bible doctrine. And that's what it happens, dear brethren, all the time. People who reject the word of God. People who don't have respect for the mind of Christ. People, while in their deathbeds, they want to talk to God and say, God, give me grace, I will come back. And God the Father said, have faith in me. But you should come with a true repentant heart because he knows, though he recovers you from such sicknesses, in his omniscient knowledge of God, he knows very well whether you will obey his word or you will still act hypocrite. He knows it very well. You cannot play thinking that I will play with Lord God in such and such standards or gimmicks or in the standards of which I would do all the time to escape. No. He knows very well what you are. He knows very well what you will be even after you are given grace. So dear brethren, he says, the shepherds we have to play the number one role in feeding the flock. If you don't feed the flock, the flock will perish. They don't dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's what we read yesterday. They don't come to have a relaxed way of life. In the great strength of the energy which has been covered by the Word of God. And that Elion who comes only from the Word. And then they don't lodge or they don't lean 
under the shadow that is the word called to be tessel under every facet of the details of life of all your transitories of life you don't be or have your shadow that is what the your lodging not shadow lodging under the transitories of the word called shadai the most powerful one they are really called not to live the life like these unbelievers they are spiritually dead you are called for this epiorinias high calling in the church age you are spiritually alive our calling is heavenly calling in the lord so if you are not lodging or abiding the word says for you in the english if you are not having that complete rest or to remain relax or lodging in the standards of the great transitories of life for what you have been worried of for what you have been looking the only things that should be for you to be worried is have i grown up as scribe have i made any disciples or i have used my life to the grace of god in the grace of god by producing the glory of god which you have to pay back which you have to do to the lord god that's what you have been called that's why he says in the excellency of your rank in matthew 11:30 come and take my burden which is very easy to be driven for you which is very light come and take your life in the standards of this great yoke what he calls be a bond slave to me and in the things of your life which i'm giving easy which is pleasant which is virtuous which has been supplied for you according to the needs just pay back my glory to me you are due to pay back to the lord hebrews 2:14 because he has crowned us with glory and honor and he has set us free even from the last enemy called as death so if ever you fear and worry you need to fear only for the work which you have left undone before the presence of the lord and everything else he covers under that great five letter word called as grace everything he covers in that grace The only thing you need to worry you need to worry about the standards if you don't fulfill the work of the Lord and much of the present Christendom have forgot the work of the Lord so he says every transitory of your life what all the things you think which has been much difficult or literally difficult or easy all transitories of your life at every breath you will lodge or have complete trust under that el shadai because it will be the most powerful thing that the world could ever know every thought you take every decision you make every word you speak in which our calling you have been called in your business in your job in your occupation because you are daily taking the spiritual manna in the freshness of the vigor of the oil of the word of god in the fellowship of god the holy spirit since you are doing it every day every transitory of life your every breath your every step you walk it will be something powerful which the world hasn't known therefore he says there is a lot of difference between the people who are in the world and the people what you are as a believer in christ you haven't even known what is the power that is given to you so that the unleashed power of you or the things which will be least the world should know it right now when you're alive in the lord not after you die so everything you do that should be a permanent impact so that all nations bow down before the lord he claims in psalms 47 because he's god of glory every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess he is something superior your vain vague minds cannot understand it therefore he says every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is the lord of all and the time will come when the resurrection of these unbelievers would rise up the seventh judgment could be taken as considering as a point of one of the judgments of the major ones after the judgments of this fallen angels 
they would know what they have lost on this earth. Because resurrection is for the just, resurrection is for the wicked. Wicked for eternal lack of fire forever with the fallen angels. And the resurrection of the just, they would be with the Lord forever. And we have been given something great to understand we qualified for that age by calling to be worthy for the resurrection of the just. Therefore, God the Father says in Jeremiah 23, 4, I will send shepherds. The shepherds who have been sent by the Lord, what they do? They feed you. The word feed is nothing but again, they make you in return the teachers. They make you to grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat. And they shall fear no more. Who? The people who have learned Bible doctrine. The word fear is Yare, the worldly fear. Neither they will be dismayed or shattered or broken into pieces. Much of the thing when we learn through the life of Moses or Joshua, he went to the disciples, he said, fear not. The word fear not is nothing but do not worry about the things on this life of this earth. Why do you worry on the life of this earth? You should be thankful and glorious one to the Lord because you know when you die, you will be in the presence of God the Father face to face, provided you are really a true believer in my Christ, not with gimmicks. And the reason why I use the word provided is because much of the people, they think they have done good works. They have done much development in the church. They have made this, they have made that, and their uh, life of this faith, what they have lived called to be godly life, will be paying them back. No, don't ever think. If you haven't done the will of God the Father, he says, workers of iniquity, depart from me. I have never known you. Tomorrow you may claim, Lord, I partook in the elements of you. Lord, Lord, saying, Lord, we ate and drank in the presence. What we eat and drink in the presence of the Lord is Lord's table. And you may say, Lord, we heard their word, not in the church, but in the broad places. He says, no, I never knew you. Get out. So you may say, Lord, I did for the church this great construction. I did for the church this great work. Where there is no sound Bible doctrine, Lord God calls you to examine yourselves, whether you are in doctrine or not. If you are not in doctrine, then you are reprobates. You are apostasy to the core. And every breath you have to examine yourselves. If you don't examine yourselves every day, every breath, you're going to lose. And tomorrow you may say, I will be present before the Lord. But you haven't done the will of God the Father, except by faith alone in Christ alone. And taking your cross, the true believer who has been transformed will take up his cross. He will have the fear of the Lord. He will deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. He loves to live soberly, sophronismas, first changing his mind to the thinking of the Lord, righteously, dikaiosune, and then he will be usabian one. That's what we read in Titus 2, 11 through 15. And he'll be eagerly waiting for the blessed hope of the Lord. These are the believers whom God the Father wants, as the same thing in Jude 14, when he said with Enoch long back. But you think you have done better. You think you have done best. You have done that. You have done this. Without letting go the worldly lusts. The worldly lusts are nothing but your sins. What are your sins? Worry, anxiety, hatred, fear. But the true believer in the Lord who knows he has been delivered from the dead, who doesn't have to who doesn't have to worry when the death has power over him because he's been set free, says Hebrews two fourteen, even in Titus two fourteen as well. So that he might redeem us, he has redeemed us for himself a peculiar possession, who are always eager waiting to do good works of the Lord. He has redeemed us. But it is what we have to sanctify ourselves every day. Believing in Christ is as good as a seed which has been sowed in the soil, which will die and will become a new one. Until and as it becomes a new one, it cannot grow up. There is no death of the seed, there is no new life. So those who are really born again in the Lord, by faith alone, in Christ alone, those who have been 
renovating the standards of the thinking every day. These are the people that are eagerly waiting to stand before the presence of the Lord. Because they love to finish their work that has been given to them as Lord and Savior, as Jesus Christ said in John 4.34 and John 17.4. If you are a believer in the Lord, you should have to know what is your work. The work which is pending, the work which you have to collect and to completely give to before the presence of the Lord, a complete product. That work you have to finish it, not half done, but completely you have to finish it. That's the reason he anoints you. Therefore, the same thing what we need to look in Exodus 10. When Pharaoh's heart was being hardened by the Lord so that he shall not let go. The Hebrew word is Kazakh. He made it steadfast. Every believer's heart should be made steadfast, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to wax Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But rather every believer's heart should be steadfast in carrying the cross joining as disciples and growing up as grammatias. And God the Father has given you that steadfast heart to be always in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit alone and hate the sins of this world. Not to live in it, but to hate it. But much of the Christianity you look, they love to spend their time in sin rather than living for the word of God. That's the problem including by the shepherds, including by the pastors. Therefore, we don't find renovation. Therefore, they fear for death. But here, word of God says to him, Fear not. When you made them the disciples, when they grown up as grammatists, they fear not. What for they fear not? They fear not for the death. Having this enlightenment in the word of God, long back, the great missionaries who went to all over the world, they had the same power of God. The Holy Spirit has... The same thing told to Moses, the same thing told to Joshua in chapter 10 and chapter 11. Immediately he comes up to the help, to the work of the Lord. Elijah couldn't learn the principle, though he was been said there are more than, there are 7,000 men who haven't knelt before this Baal gods. He did not learn the lesson, though he taught them the lesson. Much of the people today don't learn the lesson, though they have the caliber like Elijah. They lose it. They exchange it for the details of life. They fear. Much of the thing that this world is offering you, nothing but the lust of flesh, the lust of eye, and the pride of life, and the luxuries of the life, are a great charming house. And you fear... But the word of God says, you fear the work of the Lord, all these things will be provided. The time you don't fear because you have mastered now the details of life. You know, the details of life are dead in the sight of God. We need not fear about them. What if, if you don't have a bike, go by walk? Those who don't have the ability to walk or have that attitude to walk, they fear for the bike. But those who have a firm mind, stabilized mind, mind of the Lord God, they would think first the word of God has to be taken a heart. So they take the word of God and the burden of God and if needed, they go by walk, even if there are no shoes. That's the commitment needed for us. You say, if I have only the bike, then I will go. These are elibis developed by your own childish brain. So you fear the details of life. And much men fail because they fear the details of life. Much men, they fail. Because they haven't known the love of God, the need of God, that which has been given for us to be performed, which has not been made by much of the people in this 20 or 2,000 years of Christendom. Nearing 2,000 years. Much of the work they haven't achieved to make every believer, to go and make in every nation the disciples of the word of God. They fear. But he said over them, do not fear because you are grown up as grammatias. And then, neither they shall be dismayed. The word dismayed is nothing but they shall be broken up into pieces. What else? You can find a lesson from William Carey in his life. 
his wife, his children, much of the things he lost, and moreover, for more than ten years, no convert, except the first one after ten years in India, besides the conditions in India which were tough for him. Those things do not break up the heart, as Apostle Paul says in Second Corinthians 11, when he describes about his work. I was beaten with this, I was without food, I was without water, I was naked. I was with the people of hypocritical brethren. All these things do not trouble me. But I have one anxiousness. What they are teaching in pulpits every day. Second Corinthians 11.27, he says that word. I am not worried about what all I have gone through. I will not be broken what all I have gone through. I will be broken in only one way. That is what if they are not teaching sound Bible doctrine in the pulpits. That's what it causes me to have anxiety. That's what it makes me to fear, to worry. Because much of the work is to be done. And yet these people haven't enlightened their minds to know what glory to be given to the Lord God in the Holy Ghost. They're worried a lot about their belly. They're worried a lot about their families. They're worried about a lot about their livelihood on this earth. But concerning the word of Christ and the work of Christ and the glory of Christ, they haven't even worried an inch or a millionth of a millimeter. But the word says, if you grow up as grammatias, you will not fear the world, neither you will be broken into pieces, the conditions that are happening to you on this earth, because you know this world is temporary, your life on this earth is pilgrimage trip, because every transitory of your lives under his Lord, you are going to take with his great powerful weapons. Therefore, you need to relax every day in the word of God. You need to transform the renovation of your thinking every day so that your heart could be enlarged. And where you run, you run to take in the cord of wisdom as your way of life. So that you could know now to have the heart of my Lord. The word dismayed is chatat, which is nothing but broken up or broken up into pieces. What a sad thing we find. Though the word says, fear not the conditions of this world, that's why we find the word 3372. It's not 3373 or 3374. 3373 and 74 refers to God. 3372 refers to the earth. That's what Satan says to God. To Lord God in the challenge of Job in chapter 1. He feareth you. The word what does Satan says 3372. But what Lord God says to Satan is 3373. Because 3373 is what you need to look. Godly fear. He godly fears me. Satan says he fears you in the world because he has lost all the details or he will lose all the details of life. Therefore he's fearing you. Therefore he gives you sacrifice. Even those sons of him, they might have had a sin against the Lord in their thought. So he says, he gave even sacrifice on behalf of that. Because he'll lose, he will lose the wealth, he will lose the name, he will lose the fame, he will lose the children. So he's fearing you. That's 3372 way of life. Much of the people today fear 3372 way of life. They don't fear 3373 way of life. Those who fear 3373 way of life, they will be legends like the standards, what we call William Carey. In the past, Moses, Zephorah left, he did not worry. He wanted the word of God. He wanted the burden of Lord God, how he could live, though he was a man of the same nature to be rebelling against Lord. Yet in everything, God the Father strengthened him. So what do we learn from these lessons? Fear not, neither be broken up in pieces. When you grow up as grammatias in the Lord, you neither fear the details of life. In everything it is the work and the hand of the Lord. In everything it is the finger of the Lord. Whom you marry, where you survive, who are your parents, who is your brother, who are your children. Rather than fearing about their security and safety in life, you have to fear first to safety and secure the word of God. When you secure first the word of God and give proper honor to the will of God, you have a life that has been designed and kept by the Lord, such a glorious, honorable one, not only on this earth, even to the days to come in the heaven. A life of great glory and honor to the Lord. God wants every believer to be there as a grown-up grammatias. 
So these are the ones who will not fear, these are the ones who will not be dismayed, and neither shall they be lacking. What is the word lacking? Pakad. The word meant to say that which is been missing because these people will grow up as grammatias. Thus they take in account every iota and carrera. So they will not be in a way to worry that something is gone or the way that they are still in need of something. So to attend or to muster or say, Lord, such and such things I don't have in my life, though you may don't have literally, but the grace of God is enough, as he said to Paul. Lord, three times I besought you about this thorn in my flesh. He says, my grace is enough. That's what you have to grow up. The word lacking is nothing but his grace is enough. Something you may you may not have, something you may not have in the standards of making it to be as a muster or the word meant to say to seek. But God provides. Enough you have the troubles for the day, he said. At the same time, enough is the knowledge of doctrine you have for that particular day. Meditate upon it day and night, the word of Lord God, and live for Christ. He guides his angels to provide you before then you to go and to do the work of the Lord. As the three days journey before them, the angel of the Lord God went to prepare a place for them. We read in Numbers 10.33. So it is for us. He prepares. We have to receive. If you don't have in that, give thanks to the Lord. Don't get anxiety. The only thing what you need to get in, do you have the word? Do you have the mind of Christ? Do you have the right word of Lord God for you? Be happy for that. That's enough. Don't try to think more. Lord, I don't have this. Lord, I don't have that. These are what the babies do. The whining ones do. Grammatias don't do it. In everything they go ahead by giving thanks to God the Father. The only thing what they have in their mind. Till how much of apostasy. Till how many days more. The word of Lord God shall not be properly honored. That is the only fear they have. And apart from that they don't have any fear. The sooner the better as the knowledge shall cover the entire earth, he said in Isaiah 11, which will be in the millennium. As the waters covers the complete ocean, we are waiting, Lord, when each and every believer will grow up as grammatias. Without growing up as grammatias, they are believing upon the quivers of this necromancer's Lamentations 3.13. They are getting spoiled in the true life in the Lord. How many days more, Lord? And God the Father knows the time. And yet we have a lot of things to do for the Lord God yet. But we want everyone to have the same knowledge of God because it is equally given to all. So, if there is anything that is lacking in you, he said in James, ask unto the Lord, he shall provide you the wisdom. You ask and you receive not because you ask it, but you believe not. And you ask it for your lusts rather than for the glory of God. Therefore, you don't have the wisdom of God. So he says, the shepherds will feed. They will not fear the world. Though they are broken in pieces, they will not worry except to carry the guidance of the Lord for his glory. Neither there shall be anything lacking. That's what the word says. Neither shall be anything lacking or muster or to be reckoned or to be sick. Because God is enough. God is in me. If God be in us, who could be against us? If God be with us, what is the problem for us to seek or ask anything else apart from his glory to be honored on this earth? And he says, said the Lord God, that's the command by the Lord. Because that's the word of God, which he shall honor. And he has honored in the back giving shepherds. He's honoring right now in the Christendom as well by giving shepherds after his own heart who shall feed according to the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The only problem is you haven't recognized them yet because you don't have time for the right word of God. You have time for each and everything on this earth except for the right word of God. 
That's why you fail. Priority number one, seek his righteousness and his kingdom first. The pilgrimage trip on this earth, what you spend your time in seeking the details of life will not give you a dust of a reward for you in the heaven. Not even to the dust which you cannot see with your eye. But you do and seek the things of God the Father, you will get a reward. As he said in Second Peter 1, 7 through 13, abundance will be your entrance. You will not be barren, neither you can see far off, he said. The word meant to say, even if you learn the mystery doctrine, you will have a lot of rewards. We want that life which is forever, not the details of this life. What you eat, what you drink, what you wear, God provides. When he sent with his animals, with his ravenous nature crow, can't he provide us now? When he made for Hagar the water to pump up from the soil of the desert, do you not think he's going to provide us now? It is the same spirit, it is the same Lord God, he hasn't changed. Don't think your science and advance, your know, scientification things, or which you have discovered and invented, could say, God, who he is, and you want to say to become an atheist. <laughs> That's what your mind is. What he did in the past, he does greater than that in the future. That's what you find in Joel, the millennium description. You will find the entire chapters of Revolution 4 through 19, the revolution, uh, the tribulation which happens. Go back and study. That's the future for you. He hasn't obscured the future. He's showing you the future. The seven years, what will happen? Before the judgments of the Jews and the judgments of the Gentiles. Before the judgments of the fallen angels. And before the judgment of the resurrection of the dead. That is called to be wicked. Be careful, dear brother. These words will abide forever. And as Apostle Paul said, In God we lie not. God is our witness. So we say the same words. In God we lie not. God is our witness. And how many days more you want to enjoy this life that's left to you. But remember God the Father has given every believer the grace to understand this true life in Christ. The sooner the better you come back to the will of God. Don't spend your time in vain glory in search of lies, but rather become grammatious joining as disciples so that you will not fear the details of life. Neither you will be dismayed, neither you will be lacking. Understand these things, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to be telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you will be my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season, out of season, because the diamantrum of witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamantrum of witnesses in Welling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamantrum of witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire and the coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His grace. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is, O Lord, to understand the Word. Fearing not the world, neither to be shattered into broken up into pieces as well. Not having any lacking thing in us, you have provided for us to grow up as cramatious in the Word, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. To understand the true purpose of this life, a life like Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, what He lived, 
considering and seeking those things which are above, which is the will of God the Father alone, and making our lives also to be bound up to seek those things which are above, rather than entangling ourselves in the details of life through sin. To this extent, Father, we pray, help us to master the details of life through your word, and not to get ourselves worry, anxiety, or fearful to the details of life, but rather being thankful in everything, as Apostle Paul said, to be content in whatever state we are. But do the will of God the Father in paying back that which is your glory every breath we take. And that to doubly as you paid back our things on this cross and given great peace, so also we love to pay back double your Lord for the things which are bestowed upon us. In Christ's might, let's pray, Lord's gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord.